Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm going to jump right into it. A uh, few things I want to go over. One, many of you I know lost power last night, including me. We lost power. I'm at Richmond Pond. I think a tree came down at the Boys Club Camp or uh, Camp Russell uh, and took a transformer out, a bunch of lines. We were close to four hours without power here. And I know a lot of people lost power. And then there was some people who didn't or some people who lost it for 30 seconds or so, just a quick flicker. Um, it, I don't think it was as bad as they predicted as far as wind. I was thinking much worse was coming. Uh, I don't think we went over 20 miles an hour here or something like that. But anyway, temperature dropped. It was drastic. It was beautiful. It was in the 50s. Uh, and the next thing you know, boom. So anyway, hopefully everyone's got power back on and everyone's safe and everything's cool. Uh, wind storms are the worst thing in the winter. That's what takes a lot of trees down. And again, we have, we're losing so many ash trees due to the emerald ash burrows. Those worms, uh, they're, they're an invasive parasitic uh, species that they believe somewhere between 1980 and the early 2000s, uh, they came to the United States through imports coming in from China. Um, and they specifically kill ash trees. A lot of the other trees, I guess, have natural toxins in it that they can't uh, get into them. Just a natural protection, but not the ash trees. And the ash trees, if you look around, are coming down at ridiculous rates. Uh, I think we're gonna see so much of that with these storms, uh, just regular storms through the seasons. Spring, summer, winter and fall, fall, winter, whatever, uh, you're going to see a lot of trees coming down. And that's a big part of it. Uh, if you live near any woods, which most of us, all of us do, look around at the ash trees. Uh, and that's why you're probably, a lot of you are probably seeing a lot of woodpeckers also. The pileated woodpeckers in this area have made a huge comeback and that is a big part of it. Uh, and the ash trees don't have a chance. It's, it's sad because there are areas where within 10 years, they wiped out entire populations of ash trees, hundreds and thousands of acres of ash trees. So uh, that is something that is concerning. Um, and they're called the Emerald Ash Borer, B-O-R-E-R. Um, and I did put a picture up on the page. So if you are interested in that, check it out because I think that is a serious thing. And if you have ash trees on your property, check them out. I can promise you. What they do is they, they turn the inside of the tree to like pulp. Uh, it just disintegrates, it kills it. And I'm talking thousands and thousands. They infest these trees uh, and just kill it. They strip it of all its resources. So again, if you do have ash trees on your property, check that out. Um, Another thing I'm going to mention briefly, I'm kind of even reluctant to mention this. As I said in the past few videos, I've been posting a ton of music content. And I told all of you that I would be doing that and the reason why. Because I unregistered the page for political affiliations and all that stuff to be able to boost and advertise and sponsor political content. And I've been trying to change the flow of the page. And I been posting these music videos. So the other day, a few days ago, I was posting, uh, I reshared the videos from the 2021 It's Pittsfield Tonight New Year's Eve show, which had a lot of local performers were part of that. And I played with a band called Sample the Cat. Um, so I shared those. I thought, well, you know what, I liked that kid on keyboards. He was a nice kid, whatever. Um, so the other day I was getting ready, there were three songs, and I, sh I shared two. I was getting ready to share the third one, reshare that one, and I saw a message come in from the singer of the band, Kendra, and I clicked on I thought, okay, cool. Uh, she's probably just going to say good looking out or thank you or something. And man, could I have not been farther from reality on that one. So uh, for some reason, they were upset that I posted those, and they don't want that stuff on It's Pittsfield Tonight. Uh, I was really confused by that because I posted that on there three years ago. I shared those from It's Pittsfield Tonight's page. Those are property of It's Pittsfield Tonight. But I didn't want any drama or whatever, so I just said, fine. Fine. I'll go delete all that. 
uh, really confused by that because the past couple of years, any other gigs or anything they had, they always posted that on the It's Pittsfield Tonight group page. Um, but anyway, so uh, I will respect their wishes and delete all that so you won't see anything ever from that act again, ever. And my sincere apologies to them. I wish them all the success in the future. <clears throat> that being said, uh, a lot of music stuff coming up. The Bobby Jean Brown uh, podcast interview. I'm really excited about that one. That is March 5th, uh, so that's next week. Um, yeah, and I've had this idea that I, like I mentioned in that uh, last, I think the last video, that I wanted to follow around basically some local bands and do a, a documentary on working bands in Berkshire County. What it takes, you know, because I, I played local for a long time. And, you know, you bust your butt and spend a ton of money to go often to come home with 10 bucks, 20 bucks, no bucks. <laughs> so, I mean, our local performers are vital to the community. And, you know, they're, it's a tight knit community with all of, well, almost all of them, but with all of them, in my opinion. Um, and, they all know each other. They all perform at a lot of the same venues. Uh, they all work their butts off and they entertain us. And that's, you know, you want to go out and see live music, you got to support uh, the people who are doing it and the venues that are, are doing it. So um, regularly, you know, for them to be able to continue doing it. You know, sometimes people, uh, bands will only push for people to go out when they're playing. And then there's others in the community uh, that I always, my friend Chantel, many of you know Chantel, she sings with, well, she, her own, I think she's in, I don't know how many bands. She, she's one busy person. Uh, amazingly beautiful voice. Uh, she performed on It's Pittsfield Tonight when I was doing the late night show. Chantel McCullough now, I, I it's crazy that I, I only know her husband now as Hot Joe. <laughs> She branded them that. And Chantel, if you watch this, there's this is a funny story. <laughs> and then I'll get moving on. But um, I was with a friend of mine and we saw your husband out. And I said, oh, look, there's Hot Joe. And my buddy looked over at me and went, what'd you just say? <laughs> and I said, that's, uh, never mind. But that happened and it was really funny. So Joe, you have been branded Hot Joe. I guess forever. Um, anyway, uh, but Chantel, I always see her out uh, supporting acts. Uh, Gina and Seth and all of them from Misty Blues, they're always out supporting and all the other acts uh, and supporting the venues. And that's what it takes. So um, that's why I also wanted to do this documentary. And I think it would just give people a little bit that don't play a little bit of insight into what it does take and how much money it takes and you know to set up and lug gear around and all that and you, local performers do it for the love uh, they're not doing it for the money if it can break even or they can pay for doing it that's a huge success right there and even that's hard to do so um yeah so i'll be looking for a few bands i I thought I was going to offer one to, as I said, that other band I mentioned that I won't anymore. So I do have a spot open where I want to get somebody else in there. Um, anyways, so, and I've reached out to a few others. So that's something I do have in the works. Another thing I'm going to mention before I wrap this up, and I'm probably mumbling today. I've been up editing and had a lot going on uh, late night because I had to wait for the power to come back on at midnight. Um, is... We all saw that they moved, they did away with Third Thursday and moved it into back to North Street, what is now going to be called First Fridays at Five. Uh, I'm excited that they brought it back. Now, here's the funny thing I have to mention with this. If you guys remember, I supported those Third Thursdays at the Common. I wasn't a fan of it compared to North Street. And I said once, I, you know, I go, I support them, I respect all the people that, you know, set up and do these things, but I always thought the premise of it was to bring traffic to North Street. Um, and when I said that, again, we have certain people in the community, and you go back, I, all these posts are still there, 
where I, I hate to say I was attacked, but it was like certain people that are in organizations in the city came after me saying that's not true they want it at the common the business owners don't want it on north street uh why are you being so negative you know because that's always the defense uh but it turns out maybe i wasn't being negative because it looks like they must have done a study on this they're not bringing it back to north street for no reason so or is that true then that the business owners don't want it there. I, I don't, I, I had a hard time swallowing that. Now, a lot of people are saying Friday, that's a weird day to do it because Thursday was traditionally like a family night. And then Friday, you know, maybe people going out to bars and entertainment and that kind of thing, a little different, but we'll see. It could be a huge success. I'm glad that it's taking the steps of going back to North Street. I think that was important. We have to support our downtown businesses. And uh, again, somebody, and, this, and then I'll wrap it up. The, the last thing I want to mention, and I'm curious how a lot of you feel about the first Fridays at five thing. I think it's potential to be very successful. I hope so anyway. Uh, it could be a start to bringing traffic back to North Street. We've just abandoned it. Uh, We've abandoned it, and by the horrible changes, it's been abandoned even more, and we can't do that to the business owners. We have to support our business owners. So the last thing I want to mention then is somebody sent me a message, what's with all the Porta Via stuff and this and that? Well, for one, uh, I've said this, I'm working with uh, a limited amount of businesses right now. Porta Via in Dalton is one of them. They sponsor this. So I'm able to do the podcast, and I'm able to do the shows coming up, and I'm able to go out and do things. Pittsfield Rye Bakery sponsors this. Jim at Clositivity sponsors this. Uh, that's another one. Uh, I'll be doing a new refresh. There's still a month left on that Clositivity special uh, where Jim is offering a, a, a big discount to uh, anyone who allows them to film the build, which would be me filming it, by the way. Um, and it's just the bill that wouldn't be showing your house where you live or anything like that. Uh, and he's offering, I think it's 25% off. And all you have to do is share that video. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do a new one to refresh it because it's not till April 1st that we pick um, or gem picks, but I'll be resharing that again. But that's why I did those ads that way uh, because without Porta Via, without Pittsville Rye Bakery and without Clositivity, I can't do this. And I have a few more that are coming on board. Amy Kotsky at Designer Consigner. I have not been down to see Amy yet, but Amy was one of my most faithful and loyal supporters from day one. And she made it possible for me to do that late night show and everything. So um, Amy's another one. I got to get down there and talk to Amy. Uh, she's such a great person and her store is a, a great store and I love shopping there. Um, but anyway, uh, that is why I do those ads that way. And I don't really look at them as traditional ads. Porta Via has a different nights, different themes, incredible food. I'm proud to have them as a sponsor. I love going there. I'm there all the time. And I see, I see a lot of you there. Um, and that's why. Rather than putting those in the videos, like this one as a commercial, I just do them separate. Uh, Wednesday wing night. Tonight is trivia night, I think. Uh, if I can get up there tonight, I will. Uh, but trivia night, and I, I forget what else, but I think Ryan O'Donnell hosts that. Um, so, uh, yeah. All right, that's it. I've went on. I've mumbled long enough on this one. So that is it for now. Uh, I hope that explains a lot to a lot of people. Uh, to some of the other bands, reach out to me. The new podcast with Bobby Brown uh, as my first guest will be debuting March 5th next week and then a whole bunch coming up after that. So uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, be kind to each other, and uh, I'll catch y'all, I don't know, in the next day or two.